and the water was too choppy, so they had to take me into this huge aquarium. It was even bigger than this room. And it was this huge aquarium, and there were three whales in there that I got to go scuba diving with. It was really exciting and something I had never done before in that caliber. Well, the instructor and I were talking to each other, and I knew English, and he knew Mandarin, and we were trying to communicate. And the last thing he says to me, and he called it a pool instead of an aquarium, he said, you must be in the pool. <laughs> and I go, what? <laughs> and we start talking about peeing in the pool. And I'm like, I don't want to pee in the pool. And he's like, you must pee in the pool. <laughs> Uh, I am just so confused by why he wants me to do this. And a little bit later, I realize he is saying you mustn't pee in the pool. And he's not pronouncing his N and his T. And what I learned from that is no matter what culture you're part of, no matter what happens, you're going to find communication barriers that mess things up, right? Just two little letters can change the entire sentence. Must be in the pool, mustn't be in the pool. Two very different things. So when you do that, you need to make sure you share stories like that where you can make people smile. S-M-I-L-E. It's an acronym that I use to build humor. Smile. S-M-I-L-E. Why smiling is so important is because you need to build likability. People won't listen to you if they don't like you. And one of the quickest ways to get someone to like you is to make them smile and to make them laugh. Remember yesterday when I shared the story of how I met Chelsea? She's a, people asked if she did that on purpose. Yes, she did that on purpose. <laughs> of wanting to meet Jessica. So let me share this acronym with you and then let's talk about that story where I made you smile, okay? S stands for simple story. Simple story. M stands for mistake made. Mistake. Mistake. I stands for imitate. Imitate. I'm going to go through all of this. I'm just going to get it down to right now. L. L stands for laugh. Laugh. What do you think E stands for? Energy, right? Energy. Yes, I'm going to talk about this in just a second. Okay, simple story. Was me meeting Chelsea yesterday a simple story? Was me just talking about the uh, guy who's telling me I must be in the pool simple? Yeah, it's very simple. Now, were those mistakes that were made? Yes. And then who did I imitate when I talked about Chelsea's story? Do you remember? My name is Jessica. I imitated. I did something outside of my normal local variety. So if you want to make someone laugh, you can go whisper, you can go loud, you can do an accent, you can do something to imitate something that was happening within that situation. And then this is really key when you develop a humorous line and, and making people smile. You too have to smile when you're delivering this. So I can't tell you how many people that I have worked with in the United States who have humorous lines and then they deliver it like this. What do you think that tells your audience? That tells them that what you said isn't funny. You see, you are looking at me for your reaction. And if I deliver a funny line and I don't laugh, you won't laugh either. You won't smile. So the next time you have a funny line, smile with it. Smile, and you will see your audience's reaction. I'm smiling right now, and I can see several of you smiling. And all, I'm not even talking about anything funny. <laughs> so smiling, it can be so contagious. And energy. We talked about it yesterday, and I'm going to talk about it again. Time is our most precious resource. I will talk about that for the end of time, that time is our most precious resource. So whenever you get on stage and you want to make people smile, give it your all. I don't care if you have a 100 degree fever. I don't care whatever happens. When you're here, you give all of your energy. And you own it. You pretend like you uh, I had someone come up to me yesterday and said, how do you share the same story thousands of times? I have literally shared that keynote thousands of times. 
And what I want to get across is, sure, I've shared it a thousand times, but this is the first time you've heard it. So when you go and you speak and you practice a speech a hundred times and you go, I can't hear this anymore, you can't think of it like that. You have to think about your audience is getting to hear it for the first time, and that will give you energy, that will give them energy, and this will be used to make people smile. I use this, I'm not a funny guy. This is the acronym that I use, and this is how I build my humor over and over again. Chelsea even says, you gotta be a lot funnier when you're on stage. <laughs> She's the funny one in the relationship. <laughs> All right, this next one is called Five Senses, because it's very important to incorporate five senses into your speech, into your presentation. You know what the number one sense that links us back to our memory is? Smell. Smell is the number one sense. So if I say things like perfume, you all have a perfume that you can smell. Maybe it's from a loved one or a grandmother or someone who has really bad perfume. <laughs> or if I say something like uh, homemade cooking from your mom, you all have a different image of that, and you can smell that homemade cookie. It all links back to your memory. And what's important is to incorporate all five senses into your talk. And one of the most ones that people leave out is smell and taste. So if you look at that World Championship speech, I talk about cigarette butts, I talk about alcohol, I talk about all these different things that you can smell. And what I'm doing there is it's no longer my story, it's our story. Because I am engaging your memory, and I'm engaging your senses. I'm keeping you on the edge of your seat because it almost becomes three-dimensional. It becomes this element where you're no longer passively listening to me. You are engaged with your memory. So what I do is I print out my uh, poem forms, and I take five highlights. And I take green for sound, blue for sight, green for taste, or yellow for taste, and I highlight where I make you see things, where I make you taste things, where I make you feel things. And what I realize is sometimes, if I don't have it where it's all spread out, I need to add certain words in my speech to keep my audience engaged. So make sure you use your five senses. This next video I want to share with you have you ever heard of the trust ball before? Do y'all do that in the United States? Yes? Oh, so I hear some of you shaking your head. Okay, so some of you, what it is in the United States, it's this thing that we do in a team setting where you cross your hands like this and you fall backwards and people catch you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to need one volunteer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but Derek's like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> But I want to share this video with you. But before I share this video with you, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give away something. So RyanAker.com is my website. I write free articles every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for you to be a better speaker and leader. Wow. So you can sign up for my blog on RyanAker.com in the top right hand corner. And every week you will get three articles for free of how to be a better speaker and leader in your email. So I really recommend you signing up for that. And for those people who would like to sign up, I have, uh, actually, I want to do something different. I'm going to give something away. So Chelsea and I, we have.